What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. For today's video, we'll be going over the range test process and do a range test on the new T1000E from Seed Studio. Then we'll show the results of the test in our mapping tool and see how it did. Join me and let's take a look. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. In the previous video, I just went to a few spots in town for a few miles during the range test, and my main goal was just to compare the signal levels of the new T1000 and the WizMesh Pocket. And I didn't necessarily do a range test and go as far as I could until I lost signal. For the next set of range tests, I did just that, and that's what we'll be showing in the results of this video. Add a few comments on the previous video that they couldn't gauge the scale of the range test since I had the data overlaid on a blank screen for privacy reasons. For this video, I've just changed the GPS coordinates so I can show them on a map to get a better idea of the range test. I've also added a measuring tool to the map that we can see on the top right here and also added the option for aerial imagery to the map. But we'll get into that later, so let's do a range test. To do a range test, we'll need a stationary MeshTastic device that'll be automatically sending messages, and then a mobile MeshTastic device that'll receive the messages and log the data. Now, I'm mainly an Android user, but I did purchase an iPad to get acquainted with the Apple version of MeshTastic, and the Apple version doesn't have the same export range test option like we have on Android. But the docs say that the position log can be downloaded for a node. I did this after a range test, but my results didn't have the SNR readings and seemed to just be a position log of anywhere the node has been instead of specifically for the range test. Maybe I did something wrong, and if you know how to fix this, let me know in the comments below. For now though, this will be limited to Android devices. We'll need to configure both our stationary and mobile nodes for the range test, so let's start with the mobile unit. First, we need to make sure the GPS is enabled by going to the three-dot menu on the top right, radio configuration, and then position. Then make sure GPS mode says enabled. Then below that, we have the GPS update interval, which is usually at a default of 120. I like to change this to 20 seconds and update more frequently for the range test. Now this will use more battery power, so be sure to set this back after the range test is done. We can now hit the send button to save the changes and the device will reboot. Now if the mobile device doesn't have a GPS, we can use the phone's GPS by going back until we're at the main screen here. And then at the bottom, we have a checkbox for provide phone location to mesh. You can also do this if your device has a GPS and you prefer to use the phone's GPS. I didn't notice a difference in doing this compared to using the device's GPS, but this may vary based on device or phone. For a larger mesh like we have here in East Tennessee, I don't recommend doing the range test on the same settings as the areas mesh because this will create congestion. For our use case, we want to see what sort of range we're getting from maybe a new device we got or a new antenna we put up, or maybe we just want to see what sort of coverage our home node is providing. For that, we don't need to be on the main mesh, so let's change our settings to separate ourselves by changing the lower settings. We'll do that by going to the three dot menu on the top right, radio configuration, lower. Now we could change the modem preset from the default long fast to something else to get us off the main mesh, but this will change the range we would normally see. Which brings up another use case for this, which would be seeing what sort of range we get with the slower and faster speeds. But for this test today, we want to test the default long fast modem preset. In order to do that and not create congestion on the main mesh, we need to just change the frequency slot. This is usually 20, but we'll just change it to 15 for this test. Once we have that in there, we can hit the send button and go back to the main screen while we wait for the device to reboot. Once we're connected back to the device, we can configure the range test settings by going back to the three dot menu, radio configuration, then scroll down to the module configuration section, then we'll have range test. 
For the mobile device, since it'll just be receiving messages, all we need to do is turn on the range test enabled toggle switch and hit send. With that, we now have our mobile device configured and we're ready to configure the stationary device. So let's connect to that from the main screen setting tab, which is this gear cog on the top right here. If you mess with a lot of devices like I do, you'll likely have a long list like you can see here. Many of them are called TC2 and I don't know which one is which sometimes. So what I like to do is just hit the plus sign and it will only show me the devices that are currently on and in Bluetooth range. And then I'll select from there. Then after we've connected to the stationary device, we'll need to take this one off the main mesh by changing the frequency slot like we did earlier. So we'll go to the three dot menu, radio configuration, LoRa, and then change the frequency slot to 15 to match our mobile device. Then hit send to save and wait for the device to reboot. After the device reboots, we'll need to enable the range test mode. So we'll go to the three dot menu, radio configuration, scroll down to range test, and then turn on the toggle switch to enable the range test mode. Then for this one, since it's the device that'll be sending out messages for the test, we'll need to configure a sender message interval. Since we're off the main mesh and not worried about congestion, we'll set this to 15 seconds. If you are testing on a mesh with others, then something from 60 to 120 would be better to not create congestion. Once we have this set, we can hit the send button and the device will reboot. So with that, the stationary device is ready to go and we'll start sending the messages after it boots back up. Now we'll need to connect back to our mobile device from the main screen here as usual. And once we've connected back to the mobile device, we'll want to clean out the log so we can have a fresh start to our range test. To do this, we'll go to the three dot menu on the top right, select debug panel, and then hit the clear button on the top right here. Once we've cleared it, we can hit the X and we're likely seeing messages come in with the sequence numbers at this point. And if so, we're all set and ready to take our mobile device out to see what sort of range we're getting. Now during the test, it's normal to not get a message here and there, but if it's been a while since a message was received, then that tells us we're probably out of range. Now, if you're in a challenging hilly environment like me, then you'll likely want to try multiple directions. After returning from the range test, we can export the range test results by going to the three dot menu and selecting export range test.csv. Then we can save it wherever. I'll keep mine in downloads. Then we can name the file, and for this I like to name it something that makes sense for the test. For example, I've been testing the new T1000E, so I'm going to name it T1000-1. And if I do any more tests, I'll name it T1000-2, T1000-3, and so on. Or maybe I'm comparing it to a different type of device, so I would name those tests that model device name. Or maybe we're testing a new antenna. We could just name it the model of the antenna in that case. We just want to name it something recognizable. And this is important since the map script we're going to be using uses the name of the CSV files to let you select which test you want shown on the map. Now that the CSV file is saved, be sure to turn off the range test mode on both of the devices by going to the three dot menu, radio configuration, Scroll down to range test, then flip the toggle switch off and hit the send button. This is especially important to do if you're doing the test on a main mesh with other people so you're not cr creating congestion. You may also want to change the GPS update interval back to the default of 120 on the mobile node so you're not consuming more battery than normal by going to the three dot menu, radio configuration, position, and change the setting back to the default, then hit the send button to save. With the CSV file saved, we'll need a way to get it to a computer. Send it to yourself via email or 
hook up the phone to your computer and pull it directly off the phone, whatever is easiest. Once they're on the computer, you can upload them to tools like Google My Maps or UMap. Or if you don't want to upload the data to some online tool or want something a bit easier to use, you can use our tool and do this locally on the computer, which is what we'll be doing in this video. If you're not sure how to do the initial setup of the tool, don't worry, we'll be going through that process in another video. So after the mapping tool is set up, it'll be in a folder and all you need to do is put the CSV files in this folder and run the Python command in a command prompt. Now this will generate an HTML file that we can open up in the web browser by double clicking on it. So with that open, let's go over the mapping tool. So we have the different map options that we can select with these radio buttons here. Then below that we have a list of checkboxes with the CSV files from the range test that we can select or deselect to change what we see on the map. The first CSV on the list is when I had to run some errands and pushed it out as far as I could until I was no longer receiving messages. The second CSV is when I took my dog Debian out for a walk around the neighborhood. Then finally, the third CSV is when I ran some errands on the other side of town. Alright, so if we select all of them and zoom in a bit to the cluster of points here, this is where the home stationary node is located. Let's use the measuring tool and select the home location and then zoom out a bit and select the point to the east northeast that appears to be the furthest away. And this looks to be about five and a half miles here. So not bad at all for a device the size of a credit card. Now that we've measured that, we can click on finish measurement. And then we can take another measurement to the points in the southwest by going through the same process and these look to be about three and a half miles away. And this matches what I've seen in past range tests with other devices and I'm pretty impressed that this one's doing just as well. Now it's hard to say what sort of range you'll get in your environment. It could be better or it could be worse. It really depends on your environment. Is it hilly? Is it flat? Is it at an elevated location? Is there thick vegetation or are you in a city with lots of skyscrapers? These are all factors that come into play in determining where you'll be able to reach and we've previously done a video with three tools that will allow you to get a good idea of where your signal will reach. I'll be sure to link that video in the description below if you haven't seen it. But that'll do it for this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so so you don't miss out on any future videos. We have a ton of content in store, everything from Meshtastic, ham radio, direction finding, satellite comms, and more. And we hope to see you there. Thank you all and have a good one.